Hey y'all, welcome to 2021. Lots to look forward to this year. It's the year of the ox, maybe an Olympic year, the potential landing of NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars, for my friend Harv and any other cricket fan, a potential World Cup, and me telling you month to month what's happening in Fusion 360. One thing I can say for sure is that we'll be right here helping you achieve your goals remotely, in person or wherever we end up. Let's dive in. I want to kick off with some general updates for everyone, regardless of what you use the most. After talking to many of you, we learned that the wrench icon we used for extensions was confusing. That's why we've updated the icon to a plug icon. This icon will also appear on tools that belong to an extension pack, such as generative design extension, machining extension, and additive build extension. In the preferences tab, I want to remind everyone you can turn on preview functions that are still in testing phase at the bottom. This will help you see what we're working on and what's coming. One of the things I'll be talking about today needs to be turned on here. All right, as usual, I want to start in the modeling space. First up, thin extrude. New for the extrude command is now an option to create a thin extrude. This will allow you to take the original sketch profile and give it a wall thickness instead of a block of material. We've enabled a lot of options for you to use around direction control and positioning of the extrude. In conjunction with taper angles, thicknesses, and the fact that you no longer have to model every aspect of a walled extrusion, thin extrude is helpful when you're doing anything with interior voids or when you want to explore mold making or casting. In truth, the uses for this are actually everywhere. One of the most requested surface features by you has been the ability to untrim a surface. We're happy to report that this update now gives you the ability to create an untrimmed surface from a surface body. You'll have the options for how to untrim the surface, internal, external, all, or manual. This gives you the control to get the right untrimmed surface without cumbersome workflows. Centerline is an addition that will help many of you in the turning space, or anyone who loves using construction lines. This new addition is to help identify the axis of revolution, meaning when you go to revolve something, the command automatically picks up what you've identified as centerline, saving time. But you can also use it in your sketch workflow to help better define your sketch to your needs and outcomes. It's simple, but effective. We have a new analysis type within Fusion 360, ISO Curve Analysis. This analysis type will start to show the flow of a surface. This allows you to check the surface and make sure the form is flowing correctly and if the surface blends well with other adjacent surfaces. This should help when tangency and continuity are key to the aesthetics or functionality of the design. Moving over to the drawing section, we've got two new tools that I think are super rad and will help get the point across when you're working with your fabricators, CMs, or just simple reminders to yourself when you're building it. But first, let's go into preview so you can access the first one. Broken views. For anyone who does a ton of drawings, you know how helpful and honestly how much of a requirement broken views are. Well, they're here. In the drawing views section, you'll see the broken view icon. Select it and then you'll be able to identify what portions you want to dissect. For anyone who hasn't used these before, broken views are convenient ways to make more room on a drawing packet. The dimension you apply to your part will still show the actual dimension. So rest assured your part will still come out the way you intended it. You're just saving room and more trees. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. The more information you can put into a drawing, the more likely you're going to nail it the first time around. Especially if you're outsourcing fabrication. I live by the saying, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So here, Take it slow. Dimension and tolerance and note everything of importance. Taper and slope symbols are one more way you can do this. To use it, you'll find it in the symbols section. Identify the area you want and then use it just like the rest of the symbols. Click, place, annotate, and boom. Dunzo. All right, that's it for this month in the design and engineering spaces. Don't forget to check out the electronics and cam updates on our channel.